Yo, what up, what up? All right, so what we're going to do in this video, this is episode, let me see, I got one, two, three, it's episode four, six weeks out. Y'all know what it is, but check this out. What we're going to do today is we're going to dive into a little bit of cooking, all right? The reason why we're going to dive into cooking is because I hear it all the time where people feel, think, or say that they don't have enough time to cook, they don't have the tools to cook, they don't have, you know, it's a bunch of different excuses as to why they don't successfully cook their own meals. They go out, they spend extra money. Not only do you spend the extra money, you also find you may not get the quantity that you're looking for. When you cook your own food, you get the ability to measure out exactly what you want. You could set it up in your portions, set it up in your meals, and take it in on a day-to-day -day basis. Or you could just cook for that day, cook for the week, cook for the month. Whatever you want to do, you're just in more control. The idea behind training is to gain more control over what you're doing. All right? So... Before y'all get out there, call the Meals on Wheels and all the other people that would deliver the food to you. Take this route. See if it works. If it doesn't work, call your food, call your Meals on Wheels. They'll pull up. That ain't no thing. But at least know or say, hey, look, I tried the cooking route. It didn't work for me. It wasn't what I felt was the quickest, most effective way. And then do whatever works best for you. But for me... I know that this happened to be a plus, a go-to, whenever it came down to me dialing in, my body fat, getting it where I wanted it to be, I couldn't really make it happen with foods outside. And I think reason being is because it simply could not tell me exactly what was contained inside the food in regards to calories. So sometimes, you know, you go to certain restaurants and they say like, um, this meal right here contains X amount of calories. Well, when you really dialing in your body fat and getting it down, down to a certain point, let's say stage ready, it requires detailed calories and the amount that comes in has to reflect the amount that goes out, all right? So that basically means if you're looking to bring your body fat down, you wanna make sure you're in some kind of a deficit, all right? Too many calories over the deficit, you start to spill into a surplus. If you're in the surplus, you might not be able to successfully get to your goal if you're trying to reduce body fat. So long story short, cooking was my go-to. You'll find a lot of other people out there, they'll do it too. A lot of other people out there, they'll still go and they'll eat out and they'll successfully win this, that, and the third. It's not something that you you know completely x out i still go out to eat um but that's on occasions that i can splurge so if they happen to give me some extra calories while i'm out splurging it doesn't really hit me as hard that's the biggest thing you don't want those calories to really affect the progress that you've been making throughout the week you want to make sure that any calorie coming in goes right to the place that it needs to. Well, listen, I'm talking too much. Let's get this um, let's get this cooking thing dialed in. I'm taking y'all in from A to Z. I right? we're not going beat around the bush with um, no other things going on. We going straight to the food. All right, so I'm gonna move the camera real quick. Y'all over, let's make this kitchen ready, all right? So what I'm gonna use real quick, so I'll let y'all know what's up. I'm gonna use this um, this oven right here, all right? This oven right here, the Ninja one, um, it got the little temps right here, if you see, all right? So it got broiled toast, baked, reheat, all that. So the cool thing about this one right here is you could actually use both ovens, all right, the top and the bottom. I'm not sure if I'm getting all the, all the way out. All right, so you can use the top and the bottom. You can use them together, you can use them separate. Um, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just throw my chicken in here. 
I'm gonna season it, I'm gonna throw it in here, I'm gonna give it like 15, and then we're gonna be done. I'm gonna show y'all how simple this is. We're gonna, we're not gonna draw the video out too, too long. We're gonna make it so, if there's something else we wanna get to, we could definitely make that happen. So it comes with a certain, a, a bunch of different trays. Y'all know already, you know what I mean? You buy a little toaster oven or something like that, any type of oven joint, it's gonna come with these little trays right here. And then um, what you wanna do is, hold up. What you wanna do, you wanna get your chicken out, right? So I got the chicken right here. Right now I'm working with the, um, the fish, chick, fresh chicken, to said fish, fresh chicken tenderloin. So I got the tenderloin joints right here. I'm gonna show you how we do this. So I got the tray right here, right? I'm gonna take my tray. And this is how we, this is how we move in six weeks out. This is how we move in six weeks out. Usually I'll cook throughout the week, right? I'll cook throughout the week and all that. I'll go out on the weekends. But when I'm six weeks out, we're not gonna do nothing much on the weekends. I'm gonna tell you right now, the, the weekends usually gonna be a time where we just reflect, kick it at the crib. I do know a few spots that got good salads. I find that, you know, if I do happen to be in a you know tight situation, I wanna get out the crib, I wanna do something extra. I do a salad outside it usually doesn't spill over in calories it might have me just hit where i need maybe a little bit above or sometimes a little under but it's never over way over to where it's not able to be calculated so let me show you how we do so we got our chicken right here i'm gonna cut this joint open like this Mind you, yo, this, I used to do it the other way, right? The other way I call it, yo, the other way is taking the meat and all that and then throwing it inside the, um, on, on the stove. Like, you know what I'm saying? Just cooking it up right here, turning on the fire, smoking up the crib, all that. We gonna X that out. I'm gonna show y'all how it's done. Yo, make sure you get some of this too. If y'all not working with this, you're gonna have your chicken sticking to the foil. So what you wanna do, I'm gonna give it a little spray. I'm running low, so I gotta um turn this up. Hey. That might have been a lot, but hey, it's not it's not a big deal right now. It's not a big deal. Trust. In the in the in the diet and how 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 things are happening and you'll see the success so we're going to get that for it then i'm gonna drop the um this right here y'all can see what i'm doing i'm gonna show you i'm gonna show you with the end result right now we're just gonna get the chicken out i'm gonna lay it across the foil right right on top of the um the pan that i just did just like this. And yo, it's quick though. You know what I'm saying? I mean, some people might say this is time consuming, but I mean, come on, bro. You gotta you gotta put in work somewhere, right? Even when you go to the um to the restaurants, you still gonna sit there and wait for your food. I know you're not eating fast food, right? Don't be eating that fast food talking about, you know, trying to see some good results. It's gonna come from this right here. This right here. Yo, they got other chicken from spots called like uh, Chicken Pound. I ordered from Chicken Pound already. There's a few well-known bodybuilders that rock with Chicken Pound. I don't know if y'all familiar with them or not, but it's, a, it's, it's one of the most cleanest, I say it's one of the most cleanest forms of chicken I've ever seen. It has nothing in it. 
right? When I say nothing, bro, I mean for real, for real. There's nothing in it. All it has is straight protein. All this chicken you find, you know what I'm saying, and little Kroger and all that, you usually going to find there's got to be some fat in there somewhere, right? It's sitting in there somewhere. It's not really enough that's going to affect what you're trying to do, but it's still in there, so it's something to be counted for. If you got it clean, clean stuff from the chicken pound, bro, it's so clean. All your macros, all your calories are well dialed in. Nothing's, you know what I'm saying, inaccurate. Oh, yo, um, check out what I'm working with. When it comes down to the seasoning, I don't do no sauce. I just do seasonings, all right? So we're going to do the, um, we got the total seasoning right here. And check out what I'm working with. So y'all see kind of how I'm moving right now. That's what it's looking like, all right? This beforehand. And then we gonna, um... Hold up, I think I put it too hard. That was the before result. I'm about to show y'all that after effect, for real, for real. Cause we gonna dress it up, all right? We gonna dress it up. Right now we rocking with this. A little total seasoning joint. All right, it's for cooking and grilling. I don't really get detail with the um the spices. All I do usually, I go to the grocery store whenever I'm picking up like seasonings. I just pick up anything, bro. I usually want a different flavor every time I eat or every go around when I switch out the seasoning. So I'll buy something like this and I might not never see it again. It's just how I move. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna sprinkle it in. Bro, don't overdo the, the seasoning. Wifey used to get on to me, like, wifey used to be like, yo, this the chicken too salty. And I, I didn't understand, because bro, I used to take the whole seasoning joint and just be like. <laughs> but I learned, you know what I mean? You gotta have that light hand, bro. Especially, especially when you do multiple seasonings, all right? I learned that real quick because I learned you could take like multiple seasonings, you could combine them all, right? When you combine all the different seasonings, if you put a lot, it's gonna come with a real intense tart salt taste, you know what I mean? Because you're mixing them all together. But if you lightly drape those seasonings on there and you do three, four different types, bruh, it's different. It's different. I learned that. I learned it for, you know what I'm saying, after cooking for so long, I made so many mistakes in the beginning. And then I turned around and had to understand that like, yo, you gotta be light-handed with the um with the seasoning. You can't do the heavy hands. Yo, the next one up, I got, um, oh, I like to put black pepper too. Like I know some people, you know, it's whatever, right? But some people, they be just on seasoning seasonings. They don't do the peppers and all that. I like black pepper, so I'm gonna dump a little some. Yeah, I know. I just knock at it, you know what I'm saying? Like I'm at your door, I'm just knocking. All right, it's, it sounded like a lot, I know. It ain't look like a lot, because y'all ain't seen much. But it sounded like a lot. So I got the black pepper right now. I got the total seasoning joint. And I'm still breaking out more. Hold up, I got you right here. So wifey put me onto this joint right here. If you really trying to rock with something crazy, yo, this crush red pepper right here, yo, this joint is official, bruh. I really like this right here. If you get the chance, try it. It's something different, right? You can tell I like peppers and all that, but I like, I don't really like hot stuff. I'm not like too crazy about it like that. So I dump a little on there, you know, dress it up. 
like I said, light-handed, even if you favor one of the seasonings, light-handed, bro, not heavy, not heavy-handed. So yeah, walk with me, walk with me. Yo, we are gonna do the, um, so this joint right here, this is, I used to just rock with Miss Dash only. Even Mom Dukes used to do Miss Dash. And sometimes she'll do the um, Miss Dash and that's it. So I learned quickly that it didn't require much. Even a little youngin', you know what I'm saying? I learned quick, bro. Like, it didn't take too, too much to dress up the chicken. Because chicken itself, cooked, comes with a nice flavor, if you ask me. It just, you know what I'm saying? It's not like outlandish and crazy, something you want to go to every day. But it's not bad. So the moment you add a little something to it, it takes it to that next level. And what I'm doing right here, bro, yeesh, we about to go to level, what I say? One, two, three. It's the third, this is the third season. Third or fourth. I lost count. But the fact is, we got hella seasonings on here. And we not going to come with that flavor that's like, you know what I'm saying? That flavor that you just like, ugh, you know what I'm saying? You, you, your face scrunch up. You take a little step back. Nah, we, this going, this it right here. This is it right here. And mind you, this is all going slow because I'm doing it for the video. It's a lot slower than what it would normally be. Normally, I got the joints out right here and I'm like pop, 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 pop. Toss it in, and it's a wrap, all right? So I think I'm gonna call it quits. If I really wanted to push it, this joint is getting old, but it's called Season All. Season All, you see? It's all right. Um, I throw, matter of fact, yo. You see, and then, yo, this is the number one tip I got for all y'all right now. Every time you add another seasoning, put less. All right? So this, I'm going to just tap it. Tap, 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 tap. You don't really want to hit all of them with the equivalent amount. All right? First one I did, it was the most. Second one I did, a little less. Third one, a little less than that. And then now this one, whichever it fall, wherever it falls in order, fourth, fifth season, we're going to um, hit it real light. Really light. It ain't coming out yet. Hold up. All right, cool. We 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 doing something. All right, and that's it. Wow. Don't need no more. All right. So yo, I'm gonna put this aside. Um, and what we gonna do is we are gonna go to the next step. It's already done, it's ready. Next thing is gonna be the chicken um, in the oven. So my whole thing is whenever I do it, this is gonna depend on the individual and what's your, what your preference is. Now this is my whole thing. Some people like the chicken to be juicy. Some people like the chicken to be dry. Some people like the chicken to be a little juicy, a little dry. My idea behind it all is just go with whatever fits you, whatever you have planned in store. All right. What I mean by that is, let's say I'm prepping this chicken for the next three, four days. Well, in those next three, four days, my idea behind the chicken lasting as long as possible might be behind making it as dry as possible. Why? Because as the days progress and all the condensation sits in and everything starts to, you know, settle, it doesn't actually go into like mush. It just goes from that dry point from the first day and it'll slowly, you know, go into like something a little more moist, but it's not all the way like uh, moist and, and soft. I like my chicken to be more dry. I know people call me crazy. I like it dry, dry, where I'm down in bottles of water just because of how dry it is. And then, you know, ever so often I'll do the little, the more moist style chicken where it's, it's you know, saturated in a dressing or anything like that. I'm not against it. I just prefer, especially during prep, as time is getting tight, you narrowing down the weeks, 
I prefer the chicken as most dry as possible. That's just me. All right, let's get this thing in the oven. All right, so what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna open up shop. You're gonna slide in just like this. And it's simple. You push it in, done deal. I don't see the chicken again until it's done. So I'm gonna come over here, right? And I'm gonna show you how this works. I don't know what y'all can see, what y'all can't see, but I'm gonna hit temperature. All right, be 400, right? So we gonna run it up. I'm gonna do 425 on the temp. And then we gonna do Tweezy on the minutes. So 20 minutes. 425 degrees, you hit that button down there. It's gonna say pre, and the joint gonna be ready in, um, it's gonna be ready in 20 minutes. When it's finished, when the chicken is done, it's gonna have um, some saturation to it, right? It's gonna have some water, or I'm say water, it's gonna have some like some oil, whatever saturation comes off the chicken, it's going to be inside the the, um, the foil or whatever. I like to use that. I like to use that to add to some of the moisture. It's not really in any fat or anything that's going to kill you if anybody feels like that's extra fat lingering at the end. I like to use it for the moisture side if that's needed. I told you already, I like my chicken more to be dry. Sometimes the dry chicken just doesn't work out because I might not even have a bottle of water close. So it is what it is. I have my times where I change according to whatever's going on. That's the idea that I try to preach. The idea and message that I try to push is what you really want to do is you want to make sure as you dial in your diet, as you dial in your routine, exercise, or nutrition related, you actually learn about what you're doing. I know those people who follow programs and all they know is their program. That's all they know. And if anything comes in there in the equation outside of the program, they don't know what to do. So in this case, all I'm telling you from chicken to workouts, to anything you do in regards to fitness. Programs and schedules are great foundation and a great base. But you'll find that when you move on to novice or intermediate or um, expert or professional, you start moving on to higher levels, you start learning that the schedule's not the only thing you go by. You go by more so how your body feels, what your body's telling you. It's like your schedule says you need to go to the gym, but you're really, 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 really sore. What do you do? That's a simple one, right? Because somebody who knows the game, they know the game, they're gonna be like, look, this is easy. My body grows more when I rest. Does it make sense to go break it down more when it's already indicating to me that it's broken down enough? It's broken down so much, it's showing signs of soreness, it's going in. It's showing signs of soreness, and it's also giving me the idea that I need to replenish, I need to build back, and this would push me to break the schedule and what it's telling me to do, and I need to rest and not go to the gym. That's what I'm talking about. Some people, hella sore, bro. They ready to tap out. They cannot even move. But the schedule said they gotta pull up. And what do they do? They end up pulling up to the gym. When they pull up to the gym, it ends up being one of the worst workouts that I ever had. I don't know what type of workout you have. I don't call it on anybody. But one of my worst workouts I ever had is pulling up to the gym when I'm really, really sore trying to get it in just because the schedule said I need to get it in. And I'm like, that's not exactly the game plan. 
that I would like My game plan is if it doesn't fit what I need to be doing, then don't do it. It's just that simple. It's just really, really that simple. So yeah, the idea behind this cooking thing, simple and plain, all right? Get your pack of chicken. Oh, and I ain't even talked to y'all about that. I already threw it away. But I ain't even talked to y'all about the numbers of the chicken, right? So the chicken, the way it is what it is, I already know you're going to save. I already know that. So I'm not going to even dive into that. But looking at the price, it was like $11. And you know you could get the Chipotle meal for $11, right? But that chicken is going to hold me down for like at least... Bro, come on. That chicken is at least three, four meals. You know? Let's talk about the rice. If you're doing rice... Right? See, I'm I'm a little different right now. Let me show y'all what I'm doing. We doing some of this. We doing uh, some of this. As a matter of fact, I just showed y'all that. Uh, we doing... My son got me on the golden corn. The sweet peas. We doing some of this. This is how you should be dialing in the diet right now, all right? Six weeks, six weeks out. There's rice and things like that in there, right? But I can't really tell y'all where I put it. Some of y'all like, oh wait, he's holding back the secrets. I'm not holding back the secrets. I'm just trying to explain to y'all what I've just finished going over a second ago. I don't know where that rice fits right now. Right now, I don't need it, all right? I don't do the schedules. I don't do, oh, it's seven o'clock time. It's rice time. No, 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 no. We bring in rice when we need the rice. Right now we can settle with the veggies, all right? It's a carbohydrate. It's gonna keep the muscle preserved to some degree. And it's gonna allow me to burn more fat, more fat, all right? That's what we wanna do. That's the direction we wanna go in. But at some point in time, you hit a point where you will become what people define as too flat. You start your muscles and the glycogen storage levels, all of that starts to drop. It drops all the way down to a point where people will consider you to be too flat. So now you need to put some of that glycogen back in. And while that glycogen is in, preserving the muscle, it's there to also be used in little spurts. It's there to be used for energy to bring your body fat back down. So you gotta keep taking the glycogen in, keep putting it, you take it out, put it in. You take it out and put it in. In the process of taking it out and putting it in, you're bringing the body fat down lower and lower and lower each time. It's the idea behind bodybuilding overall. So at six weeks out, I'm gonna dial in most of what I'm doing with veggies and salads. When I need, I'll incorporate other forms of carbohydrates like rice cakes, rice itself, and even bread, all right? In the off season, so you understand the difference in the off season, bread and rice and things like that could be incorporated throughout the day, several times a day, periodically throughout the week, however you want it to be planned. But in the case that I'm dealing with now, with the main objective being to burn body fat, the idea is to take in a carbohydrate that's a little lighter than something that's as starchy as what I just described, the rice, the bread, that type of thing. So I stay away from those as much as I can until I really, really, really need it, all right? If you're gonna have it, because I want, I want y'all to know this too, let me get some something to drink, and if let me get something to drink, and if y'all been checking my videos, y'all know about that zero calorie minute babe. Let's go, let's go. Yo, this joint right here. Matter of fact, I keep confusing it too. It's not. It's not zero calorie. It's um five calories for every serving. Five calories for every serving, 
but it's zero sugar. It's zero sugar. So, my bad, we took a little time out right there, I had to drink. But I wanted y'all to know that if y'all decide to choose the rice route, bro, I got you. I got you. Hold on, let me, I'ma just walk, well, walk with me, man, walk with me, let's, let me show y'all how we doing this. Let me show y'all how we doing this. All right, so this joint right here, matter of fact, let me turn on the light real quick. Man, it might mess with my lighting. Let me let me just leave it as is. Y'all can see, man. Y'all not blind. Rice cooker right here. This joint right here, yo, I'm telling you, this rice cooker, I had it for a couple years. All you gotta do with the rice cookers, like let's say you in you in off season and you you gonna be making rice and all that. Yo, that joint, all you gotta do is you gotta you just take your um your water. Just get your water, get your um your uh, your measuring cup. So you measure out all what you're trying to do, your water, your, your everything else. And bro, all you do is hit go. All you do is hit power and white rice. That's it. I'm not playing. So all y'all out there that be talking about y'all ordering ordering the meals on wheels and all that, and you got things this simple. Mind you, remember I broke out the chicken. I opened that joint up. I laid it all out, I seasoned it, pushed that joint in, and I'm letting it go for 20 minutes. And it's cool too, because number one, I don't have the smoky crib. I usually, uh, I'm in the crib, I'm battling the fire alarm, you know what I'm saying? You, you, um, you're trying to get the smoke detector to turn off, so you got the, the towel, you're trying to fan it. All that extra, that's out. Cooking also involves my one-on-one, -on -one 100% attention, right? I couldn't really throw the chicken on, depending on what kind of chicken you're doing. But I liked it to be real dry, so I would usually sit and like, you know what I'm saying, like throw the onions and all that, a little saute effect, peppers. So I would usually sit on the, the stove and kind of cook it up. But in this case, I don't even need to do that. Once I push it in, I could go carry all my business, do everything I gotta do, come back around and the joint is right there waiting, ready to go. It never gets burnt. I never burn a chicken. I burn chicken a lot of times. Well, how? Bro, I will put the chicken on, season it up, maybe put on a little low flame, go take a shower. After taking a shower, I'm getting dressed, this, that, and the third. Somebody will call me and then boom, all of a sudden my mind is caught up in a different place in the indicator that I'm cooking comes through that burnt smell hitting my nose. So that's what I try to avoid with this right here. So get you one of these or something similar and you'll be good. We got 10 more minutes left, man. I'm gonna um, I'm gonna stop the video until the 10 is done. And then we gonna um, take a look at the brand new chicken. I'm gonna show y'all what I'm, I already showed y'all what I'm eating it with. My eating time is 2.30. My eating time is 2.30. So around 2.30, it's 12.30 right now. My last meal was a protein shake. All right, that's all I had. But this joint right here is peas, corn, carrots, um, good little veggie dish that I'm gonna have with the, um, with the chicken. Now what I have in store, got a little extra cardio to do. And y'all, trust me, stay locked in to my videos. I'm always dropping bombs. Bombs meaning gems, jewels, knowledge, information. Yo, this, I remember I'm different. This my pre-workout right here. This joint um, and then the chicken, right? After the workout, white rice. We're gonna toss in about a quarter cup of white rice. 
why don't I use big amounts of rice or high amounts of calories of carbohydrates as starchy as rice? I'll let y'all know. When you hit six weeks out, right, when you are dieting down to this degree and your body hasn't seen many carbohydrates for a few days, a few weeks now, your body becomes more sensitive to these types of foods, all right? That basically means a quarter cup of rice for me would get me the same pump that a cup of rice would have got from me in off season, all right? Not the same size. Y'all get it straight. I didn't say same size. It's not that I eat a quarter cup of rice and get to the same size that I was in off season. That's not what I said. I said, if I have day after day after day, low carbohydrate days, it makes my body more sensitive to the more starchy kind of carbohydrates like your rice like your breads and your pastas right so what i do is i will have something as small as a quarter cup of white rice with nothing added in it nothing extra and i'll get a pump that's just as big in terms of blood filling the the muscles I'll get a pump just as big with that quarter cup as I would one cup in the off season and I just gave y'all the breakdown when your body's not as sensitive you know it's dealing with insulin sensitivity when your body's not as sensitive to the rice and the pastas and stuff like that you probably could recall if you've ever competed and gone through the season. You know in off season, you could eat a big tub of food and it don't, nothing don't really happen. It don't really go anywhere. You, don't, you look down, you don't even really see it. But when you dial your weight down to a certain point and you eat a lot of food, you can see it. You can see it pop in like, oh snap, that's, that's yesterday's donuts. That's yesterday's cupcakes. You can see it. So that's the idea behind what's going on. Throughout the off season, you'll notice you'll get by with those higher amounts of calories, higher amounts of food, and you'll equate and gain so many results. And then when you dial the diet down, bring your body fat down, you'll be able to obtain a similar result with a lot less food as long as it's done properly all right this might not work if i just had a spoonful of rice it might kind of go in a weird direction if i had too much rice half a cup a whole cup particularly over my years of training i learned how far that quarter cup will actually take me all right it also reflects on my training and how much i've pushed my body and that'll indicate and tell me how far that quarter cup of rice will take me. Now, remember, it's not just a quarter cup. It's a quarter cup of rice, vegetables, and protein. We still have more carbohydrates coming in. We're just choosing two different forms. All right, before going to the gym, I'm going straight veg and chicken. After the gym, I need to replenish, recover, repair. I'm going white rice, veggies, majority veggies, small quarter cup of white rice, and we hitting at least 30 plus in protein. All right, we got four minutes on the chicken. We still talking. So long story short, things that are going on in the off season, things that are going on when you in season, when you about to step on a stage, don't try to knock what another man is doing in that situation. Why? Because you don't know what his body is already acclimated to, what it's already adjusted to. 
Again, if you get your body adjusted to low carbohydrate meals, it'll only make it sensitive to carbohydrate meals when you have them, when you have them high in, or in high amounts, all right? So you can't just look at another man's plate and be like, bro, you're not eating enough. You gotta track back what that man ate yesterday, the day before, and even maybe the day before that, and also dig into his workout routine and see what he's burning. And then at the very end of that, you gotta see what his goal is and where he came from and where he's trying to be. So until you uncover all that information, you really can't jump into another man's diet and equation and say, the quarter cup of rice is not enough. You need half a cup. You need a full cup. That's going to really be based on the, that individual and what their body is responding to at that time. You'll find that you'll get by with a lot of stuff you never knew was possible. I see 250, 300 pound bodybuilders taking in the same amount of calories as a bikini competitor. 1500, that's usually their deal. They like 1500. It's just the basic amount of macros that you could get by with while preserving the muscle and still um, reducing body fat. All right, some people dip down to 12. I've also heard stories of people dipping into a thousand where I've now learned over so many years, a lot of times people break a lot of the rules that they make up. They put out different things that they say and they end up breaking a lot of what they say. And they really come to find out that it's really based on the individual and what they're doing at that time, all right? I'm a, um, oh, we got two minutes on this. So yeah, I just showed y'all these little peas right here. Um, this is what I'm gonna have. I think there's onions in there too. Later today, I'm gonna have a salad. Um, not only will I have that salad, um, I'm gonna top it off with more veg. Um, I'm gonna keep crushing it with the, um, this joint right here, the Minute Maid, uh, zero sugar. And we're gonna keep the meals going. In regards to workouts. So workouts and everything been good. Everything been on point, nothing crazy. Six weeks out, if anybody, I, I need to know myself personally. So I'm gonna just go and lay, lay it out. So I know right now what I'm doing is, it's nothing crazy. I'm doing anywhere between 10 to 12 sets for each body part. Nowadays, you'll find me um, more often than ever before doing back, shoulders, biceps, traps, and forearms throughout the workout. I'm not separating it. Before, what I used to do is I used to just crush back. All right? Then I used to just hit biceps. Then I used to hit shoulders or however the order I arranged for the day. That's how I would go about doing it. Now, what I ended up doing is I'm doing like a good three, four sets for shoulders. And then I move on to back. And then I move on to biceps. Believe it or not, 20 plus years in the game, it's rare that you change it up often but you'll find that when you're trying to get to a certain point, let's say get on the stage, achieve a certain body fat, you start to dip into different areas that could have a possible good effect on your results. Chicken is done. So in regards to like my workouts and stuff like that, I found a lot of good results in giving the body parts a little bit of rest in between when I go from one to the other. So I've now been doing like let's say I hit four sets of shoulder press, I'ma line that up with at least three, four sets of pull downs. I'ma work the opposing muscles. Anything that's pushing, I'ma come back with a pulling exercise. That's what I found works really, really well for me in regards to fatigue. Fatigue is something that a lot of people face at this time during their prep, only because your carbs are so low. The carbs are low, the calories are low, and with the combination of the two, it also works on your sleep. Calories low, carbs low, sleep low. 
That means you were walking zombie at that point in time. So I found that it also affects, with all that being changed, it also affects my recovery. So I've noticed that, you know, when I'm in the gym, my fatigue levels strike up. And if I were to change body parts, I find that that body part that I've just worked could actually have adequate time to kind of come back strong enough. So when I hit that body part again, I could add the weight that I want to add. I could do the reps that I want to do. And that's simply because I'm giving it a little more rest than I was previously. I was just blowing out the muscle as crazy as I could. And sometimes that ends up being okay, especially in the off season when you can just carb up, you could just fuel up and get the muscles back into gear. I'm limited with what I could actually give my muscles. So before I knock them completely out, I don't, you know what I'm saying? I wanna also consider that some of that needs to be for like energy. Some of that needs to be dialed in for like, I mean, all types of stuff, bro. You can't just waste all your, um, I'm getting this chicken out. You can't just waste all your, uh, your calories in one area. All right, cool. So we done, we got the chicken ready. Yo, if y'all don't have one of these, my mother-in-law put me on to this joint right here. The rubber ones. I used to just get the towel. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, just the regular way, regular days. So, yo, this look, bro, this look good right here. Hold up. Let me, let me let y'all see that finished project. This look good right here, bro. Jeez. That's what I'm talking about. So we gonna have that. Oh, you see the um, you see the little liquid that came off of it. So like for all my people that feel like you know what I'm saying the um the chicken be dry and stuff like that. These the toaster oven usually it'll give you that ability to um. It'll give you the little bit of liquid at the end, so you could actually have some moisture that you could add to the chicken. So I'm gonna take this joint out. I'm gonna throw it in some Tupperware. I gotta watch the leaks though. Alright. So boom. We down. Chicken looking good, bro. So this is gonna be like, I already know it's gonna be juicy. It's gonna be for real, for real, wifey ass. Um, she wanted chicken. I actually had ground turkey lined up. And she asked for chicken. So I said I'm gonna make it. This is how she likes it. So me, I actually would do a few more minutes and some of that moisture and the liquid that's in the foil, some of that, that would actually dry up and you'll see a more burnt effect on the chicken. You'll see it kind of brown and have that, you know, that little effect that I look for to indicate the dryness. That's, that's what I really like. So I'm gonna set this aside. Y'all be telling me, man, y'all can't cook. I'm like, bro, this thing is so easy. This thing is so easy. So we got it right here. That's how we doing. That's it right there. I like it. Yeah, that's how we're doing it. So yeah, in regards to the workout, like I said, it's it's real simple. What I have been doing, I've been doing a drop set on my last set. I've been doing a drop set. And um, that's something a little, you know, a little extra I could do. Nothing to blow the muscle out of proportion, but something to keep it, like, you know, dialed in. So that's something that I like. Other than that, everything's been like in line right now. Everything's been cool. Everything's been going just as planned. Everything is on track. All right. We six weeks out. We six weeks out. Um, 
I'm probably going to make this the last section of the video. I've had y'all rocking with me for the whole thing. Y'all know what it is. I'm going I'm to have this meal at 2.30. Um, if anybody's curious as to what what protein shake I had. Remember I told y'all I had a protein shake earlier? If you're curious about the protein shake that I had, I had the Synthesix Cold Stone. Believe it or not, I have three different types of protein shakes. How many people out there know why I have three different types of protein shakes? I see a lot of people, a lot of um, you know, vloggers and all that. They they be out there and they they rock with like one company. And the only company I give credit for this is Ghost. But I see a lot of them, they'll rock with one company. In a lot of cases, when you rock with one company, the protein itself, I mean, I'm sorry, the calories, it's usually the same. Like right now, this Synthesix, one scoop is 200 calories. This is German chocolate. All right. This is German chocolate. 200 calories. If I go get cookies and cream, one scoop, 200 calories. If I go get vanilla, one scoop, 200 calories. Now, what you'll notice with me, I got this joint right here, Synthesix. I got this joint right here, Dime, 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 Dimatize. I got this joint right here. Now, mind you, I didn't buy these at different times. I bought them at the same time with a, for a real specific reason. And for anybody that been rocking with me on the video to this point, right? We 51 minutes in. Number one, y'all a real one. And number two, I'm going to drop a bomb on you right now. Next one, Ghost. Got this protein too. And then... I don't really have my um <laughs> I don't really have my camera stand um what you call it? I'm at a loss of words. I don't really have my camera tripod set up. So I got the 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 joint sitting on top of the protein shake. This one right here. Boom, the gold standard. So I got gold standard, I got ghosts, I got dimatize, I got um, Synthesis, 6, bruh, I even got, I think I'm playing, I even got the Slim Fast joint, bruh, <laughs> nah, so what I do, so y'all know, each protein shake, remember what I just described about Synthesis, 6, regardless of the flavor that you come with, it usually has like 200 calories, something like that regardless of the flavor. So what I found was real good for me and a lot of people like to rock with one company and usually the one company delivers the protein shake with the same amount of calories and the only way you could adjust the calories is if you take less of the shake, which may or may not be what you wanna do. But let me talk about it from the angle that I'm coming from. What I'm basically explaining here is each protein shake has a different amount of calories. Why? because I have different scenarios and situations that I could possibly be in that may require more or less calories. The Synthesix has the highest amount of calories. It has 200 calories. That is the indicator to me, and that is gonna be a great meal replacement. Why? Because it's gonna be more of a filler, especially for the fact that it has that many calories. It'll give me the ability to X out milk entirely because we got so many calories coming in from the shake itself. Um, I could also be in a situation where I'm low on calories. It doesn't have more or less protein. Notice, they all have the same 22, 25 grams. I could also be in a situation where I just haven't taken in enough calories for the day. So with that being said, I haven't taken in enough for the day. A 200 calorie shake will be much better for me than 110 calorie. All right, the gold standard is 110. Ghost 130, right in between. When you dialing in your diet down to the point that you usually have to before getting on stage, it's gonna require this level of detail. If 
you want to take it there. If you want to do the same shake and just cut out less of the shake and do more of the math and say, well, I'm just going to take in less of this one and that'll equate to 150 calories, that could easily be done. But again, I like to just break into it, give me the whole damn scoop, pop it in, and I'm ready to go, ready to eat. I want to look at the label and not have to fine tune and say, well, damn, I know I didn't do the whole scoop. So this carbs, this says I took in this many carbs. Well, it's really this much because I didn't take in the full. I don't have time for the math. So I buy the individual shakes to replace and and put in it, put put in it, put it in wherever I feel is necessary. If your calories are high for the day and you don't really want to push them much more, they gonna go up. But you don't want to push them push them any more than you have to. Settle with the lower calorie shake, gold standard. I'll even rock with ghosts, you know, because it's only, a, I mean, matter of fact, gold standard and dimatized, the calories are 120. 120 right here, and the gold standard is 110. So on a day where you, just things didn't make sense for you, you gotta keep the calories low. You went a little crazy at the, at the dinner table, Focus on those. This is why I have different types of shakes. I mean, it's a little bit of a flex, but I don't really see it like that. I see it as this is equating to success. This is how I get my progress. What I usually do, something going on right now, is I like creatine in with the shakes. All right, I like the creatine. Reason why I like the creatine is I like to add that filler to the muscles, keep them full still cut but full the creatine to help maintain that as long as you don't overindulge in the creatine which is what a lot of people feel they need to do because they want to achieve this big size real fast i found that i don't really need all that comfortable in my skin i take in anywhere between two to three grams i don't do research and studies but if you look at those they've shown two, three grams is the best amount. I've uncovered that working with myself, all right? I don't need any research and study about somebody who's not fully successfully doing the research and study. They're saying take five grams of creatine, the person or subject could be taking 10. Who knows? I wasn't there with them. So I'm not believing that one, I'm believing myself. So that's usually what I rock with. Oh, and don't let me miss this. Fiber supplement. This fiber supplement is a guarantee go-to, all right? Um, guarantee go-to in regards to um, when you X carbohydrates out, one of the best sources of fiber is gonna come through carbohydrates, whether it be your brown rice, brown bread, um, whole grain cereal, um, vegetables, it's going to come in the form of a carbohydrate. There are times where you can't have carbohydrates, but you need fiber. With that being said, this is your go-to, all right? Go to this. The fiber supplement will at least help, all right? It's not coming in the most natural form. We all want it in the most natural form, but it'll at least help with pushing a lot of that out when you can't actually take in the carbohydrates but i'm gonna get up off this one i've been on it long enough y'all came y'all rock with your boy y'all cooked with me i'm about to sit down in about an hour and a half with wifey we're gonna eat we're gonna yeah y'all know um but like i said i'm doing this chicken pre-workout i hit the gym after the gym i'm coming back we're doing more of this, white rice, vegetables, and protein shake. I like shake and dinner at the same time, all right? I don't separate them. I know a lot of people like to separate it. They leave the gym, they drink the shake, and then they wait. I'm cool with that, but I like to take in the protein and the carbs at the same time, all right? Yo, let me get up off this one. Y'all know what it is. 
Thank y'all for rocking with me, coming in, cooking. Hopefully y'all cooking and eating good too. That's how I'm doing it. I'm only giving y'all what I'm doing. That's all I can do for you. I can't jump through and do it for you. Just, hey, get you some. I'm gonna get up off this one. Y'all know what it is. We out. Yeah.